Here now with more Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, thanks for being here. When you read that article from NPR, it's always weeks and months later, they begrudgingly admit things that are just painfully obvious. Uh, they don't lay out much. They say, you know, other presidents did this, even though the one time they could think of is Barack Obama going to China in 2016. And it was almost an international insult that they didn't have the red carpet and the stairs prepared for him. It was seen as a backhand. So what does this, amongst everything else, tell you about the trajectory of this presidency, fledgling? Well, look, I, I thought his performance in Maui was so bad, he was so clearly out of it, that, frankly, I think it's frightening. This is not about politics and scoring points. This is the commander-in-chief of the most pow powerful military in the world, and it's clear that at least half the time, uh, he's just not there. I mean, that month mm -hmm. by month, his cognitive collapse is more and more obvious. Uh, the Associated Press just reported that 77 percent of all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, independents, 77 percent, now believe that Biden is too old to run for re-election. I suspect by next summer that number will be in the 90s, because once this starts, it's just going to get steadily worse. He's clearly in cognitive decline. He's clear, in fact, makes me wonder who's making the real decisions at the White House. It's because true. obviously Joe Biden is not. He's not capable of it. When, Mr. Speaker, when you hear that number 77 percent, you said it could go higher. In the past, numbers <clears throat> like that really would have rattled the cage of a White House and they would have said, well, maybe it's time to step away. We don't seem to hear any of that. So who is, based on everything you know about Washington, how things work, who is making the calls? Is, it, is this a Jill Biden thing? Is this a well, chief of staff I mean, thing? Is this a, who is it? Well, for, first of all, one of the nice things about cognitive dissonance is he may not know the number and it may not occur to him that it matters. And he's just going on with his life. You know, he's back on to the beach. He's relaxing. He's doing some bicycling. Uh, he has a pretty decent life. And it doesn't occur to him that all these other things are piling up in a way that will be a, an absolute disaster uh, for the Democratic Party. My personal guess is that, that the driving force behind the Biden administration is Barack Obama. Uh, Obama is the only president since Woodrow Wilson to stay in Washington. And in Wilson's case, he stayed yeah. because he'd had a severe stroke and he couldn't be moved. So the fact that Obama's here all the time, uh, the fact that his staff permeates, literally permeates, the Biden administration. Uh, and Obama's really, really smart. Uh, I mean, whatever Biden's problems are at being kind of slow and cognitively decaying, uh, Obama doesn't have any of those problems. And if you watch the administration, it's much more an Obama administration than, say, the Joe Biden of 10 or 15 years ago. This is a very mm -hmm. radical, very left-wing administration deeply dedicated to policies that are close to crazy. Uh, their electric Absolutely. car policy is a disaster. As President Trump said today, uh, it's going to destroy at least 100,000 jobs uh, and will achieve nothing in the long run. Their policies across the board, uh, going at the idea that they might propose that Americans be limited to two beers a week, uh, you know, this is the kind of petty <laughs> nanny state work. interference that most Americans will find crazy. And of course, the rumors that the masks and the mandates could be coming back as well. Uh, those numbers will go up. I think you're right. Mr. Speaker, thank you for breaking it down for us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.